Hi, welcome to this Checkpoint VPN configuration tutorial. In this video, I'll show you the configuration steps of a domain based site to site VPN. So, um, we will set up one side of the Checkpoint gateway to replicate the left hand side of the diagram in front of you. Unfortunately, I'm not able to set up this side um, due to my laptop not being able to handle the amount of resources running simultaneously. So, I attempted to install the two virtual gateways as well as the two hosts, and my laptop just died. Although it has got 8 gig RAM memory, it seems that the checkpoint gateways are very resource intensive, so that's a, a warning to you. But in a future video, I'll be doing this again with another file so I can demonstrate the end to end VPN setup. Anyway, so for now, let's uh, get started with the configuration of the VPN. So I'd like to do this in four steps. First step is to create the objects, uh, the objects for the network and the gateway for the other side. The second will be create and configure the VPN community. The third will be to define the VPN domains that will be encrypted. And finally, we'll finish off by creating the firewall rule for VPN. So uh, if we click on the firewall tab, and we can start with the first bit, which is to create the network object for the other side. So we'll label it remote underscore VPN underscore low player network. Give it a network address and the network address will be this one here 10.10.2.0 so we can give it the network address of 10.10.2.0 as well as a 24-bit subnet mask and give it an olive color to represent the local area network click ok now we create the object for the remote gateway uh, like the local gateway we have here and we'll use the public reachable IP address which is 192.168.0.11 so we do that by right clicking network objects new and at the bottom there's others there's two options so you can use this if it's a checkpoint gateway externally managed checkpoint gateway or this option which will be used if it's a from another vendor such as uh, Juniper, Cisco, Fortin etc but we'll use this option to represent an externally managed checkpoint gateway and give it a label such as remote underscore VPN underscore gateway and specify the public reachable IP address so we're going to uh, click on Gaia as the operating system and check the IPsec VPN box if we click OK here we get a warning saying the gateway's main IP is not a member of the topology table um, we can fill this out for the purpose of removing the dialog box warning so if we click add here just click external give it the IP address and the subnet mask go to topology click on external because it's the external interface click OK and that's there for you so if we click OK now it should be fine if we have a look at the gateway objects we can see a little padlock which means the IP set VPN has been turned on as well Okay, so uh, that's the first bit. The second bit will be to create and configure the VPN community. So we can do that from here, this tab here, IPsec VPN. There's also this little box here you can do it from. So if we right click, go to new community, we've got two options, meshed and star. So in a meshed op option, uh, every gateway connects to each other. In a star option, you've got a central hub and you've got lots of gateways or branch offices connecting to the central gateway so in a hub and spoke environment um, because it's a single site to site VPN we just use the meshed option which is the correct option okay so we'll give it the label name of site to site underscore VPN and click on participating gateways so we need to specify the gateways that are participating in this VPN community so that will be these two gateways here so 
So if we click add, we can add our gateways from here. So specify both our gateways, select them and click OK and now both gateways are participating in this community. So we can move on by clicking on the encryption tab. So here we can specify our encryption methods. So uh, here by default we're using iKey version 1 only but we can specify to prefer iKey version 2 if not use iKey version 1 or use iKey version 2 only. So this depends on your corporate policy or whatever your partner uh, VPN gateway supports. Uh, and that's the same for encryption suites as well. So you've got your predefined combinations here, uh, that checkpoint I've provided, or you can customize it yourself. So click this tab and specify your phase one and your phase two algorithms from here. So you may want to use the strongest, which is 256, say yes, or the P gateway may only support triple DES, so you may want to use triple DES. Uh, so you've got your options here, as well as your data integrity options here. And then you can do the same for phase two as well. Okay, so we'll move on to tunnel management. And here we can set the permanent tunnel. So by default, and the most commonly used one is to set it on all tunnels in the community. But you can also do on all tunnels of specific gateways, and then you can specify your gateways from here, or on specific tunnels in the community, and you can specify your tunnels from here. This section here is for root-based uh, VPNs. Uh, because this domain-based, we don't need to do anything with this section here. So finally, the VPN tunnel sharing. So this is for control the number of VPN tunnels open between P gateways and the most uh, commonly used one and the recommended one and the one by default is one VPN tunnel per submit pair. So make sure that one is selected unless you've got specific requirements for the other two. So there's uh, certain times where you'd want to exclude uh, certain services. So these are usually connection services to the firewalls themselves or uh, when you are connecting to the firewall through the VPN tunnel itself, you'd want to include the services in here. Uh, we'll leave it blank for now. And shared secrets. So you need a shared secret between the two VPN gateways so they can speak. And they need to share the exact same shared secret. So this has to be specified in both the VPN gateway peers. So from advanced VPN properties, we can set the phase one and phase two settings. And the first one is the Diffie-Hellman group. And the Diffie-Hellman group is an asymmetric key algorithm that does the key exchanges. So we could specify the level of key encryption from here. Uh, just to bear in mind, the stronger it is, the more secure it is, but the slower it will be. So pick the right one for your organization from here. Um, you can use aggressive mode in situations where the IP address is dynamic. So one of the P gateways has a dynamic IP address. Or it's a remote IPsec VPN community. So it's a set up for remote clients where they have dynamic IP addresses as well. So you'd use this in those situations. Uh, use perfect forward secrecy. So when this is enabled, uh, a fresh Diffie-Hellman key is generated during IKE phase 2 and renewed for each key exchange which improves security. So most organizations have this off but um, data sensitive organizations would probably have this on such as banks etc. Support IP compression. Uh, IP compression reduces the size of the data packet which is supposed to improve performance so uh, feel free to turn this on. And finally the NATS option. So it's a good idea to leave this uh, checkbox enabled to disable that inside the VPN community so when this is enabled we'd use the real IP addresses in the local network um, to um, speak to each other if for example um, you had subnets which were overlapping and conflicting then you'd disable it and use um, what is referred to as source NATs uh, and you'd be using the external uh, IP address of your gateway interface as a source IP address uh, to avoid the situation where you've got uh, conflicting uh, subnet addresses on both sides of the gateway. But if there are different subnet address ranges, uh, keep this uh, checkbox turned on and disable that. And the final 
Tab at the bottom is wire mode, uh, which allows existing connections to fail over successfully without having to go through any firewall enforcement. So uh, stateful pack inspection is not enforced and traffic between the trusted interfaces bypass the firewalls. Uh, so it makes things a little bit quicker, uh, more efficient, but uh, we'll leave this off for now. Okay. So when we click on the OK tab, we should see a warning dialog which reads, at least one of the VPN community members does not have the VPN domain defined. Are you sure you want to continue? We're going to click yes, and then we're going to define the VPN domain. So we click yes here, and if we go to the gateway object, uh, for this one, within the topology area, the VPN domain is already manually defined, which I did earlier before the video. So we can click OK on that, and then have a look at the remote gateway we created in the video. If we go to the topology tab, we can see that the warning dialog box was complaining about this object because it's not defined. So we need to define the local area network of this remote gateway, which is this one. So we're saying this local area network is the one that needs to be encrypted. So if we click OK, uh, we've defined the VPN domain. OK, so the last piece of the jigsaw is to um, create the firewall rule for the VPN and we can do that from here so we've got a rules add rule at the top and we've created a new rule so we need to define the um, the sections at the top here so if we give it a name call it VPN you can call it side to side VPN or whatever is uh, best for you and then we need to specify the source addresses so the local area network drag it into here and drag the remote one into the destination and we'll also do this vice versa so both gateways can speak to each other so the local air network uh, drag it to the destination section and the remote local air network for the other gateway drag it into the source section as well the action will be to accept and the tracking will be to log and this is very good for troubleshooting purposes as well um, you can specify the services, but we'll leave it at any. And finally, we'll edit the VPN section. So edit cell, uh, we'll select only connections encrypted in specific VPN communities, and we'll choose our community we created earlier. So that's this one, site underscore VPN. Click OK. Click OK again, and we've created our rule for the VPN. So that's it as far as creating uh, a VPN for a domain based VPN and just to recap the uh, the uh, configurations we did to make this all happen was to create the network object for the remote local area network then we created the gateway object for the remote gateway specifying the routable public IP address to identify the object we then went into IPsec VPN and created the site to site VPN community uh, just to bear in mind, the algorithms we use have to be the same on the other side of the gateway. So both gateways have to say, share the same algorithms, the encryption, authentication, the integrity algorithms, the pre-shared keys. They all have to be exactly the same, otherwise the VPN would not come up. So we did that part. Then we defined the VPN domains within the object area, uh, the gateway object within the topology area. Uh, on at the bottom of here so we specify the VPN domain here and finally we created the firewall rule itself here so after you've uh, configured all these pieces you can uh, start to test connectivity once you've got both sides um, configured correctly and uh, the most basic connectivity tests are telnet and ping so if they work that's a great good job if they don't work it's time to troubleshoot and the best place to troubleshoot in a checkpoint environment is to use smart view tracker and to have a look at the phase one and phase two uh, logs as well as uh, use the um, command line utilities within checkpoint as well um, so there's some command line utilities you can use to check for uh, VPN status as well okay that's it from me and I'd like to thank you for watching thank you